Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gaming Movie Jerks. In this eighth installment of our Hollow Knight lore series, I'll take on the difficult task of talking about the ancient civilization and the Void. This stuff is very rarely talked about in-game and there just isn't a whole lot we know, but let me try to break it down for you. Break it down for me. Most of what we know about the Void is from Relic Seeker Lim. Specifically, he talks about it when you sell him one of the four arcane eggs that you can find throughout Hollow Nest. There's also some information we can get from the Void Idol journal entries, but overall not only do we not have a lot of information, but our sources also aren't particularly reliable either. Lim clearly doesn't know much about Hollow Knight's past, as when he leaves his shop and he talks about the Hollow Knight statue, he mentions that he has no idea what his sacrifice actually was. The journal entries were obviously made by the Hunter, and in the last video we showed that he also doesn't know much about Hollow Nest, specifically Fog Canyon. And if he doesn't know much about Hollow Nest, a place that he lives in, I'm sure he doesn't know a whole lot about a civilization from a very long time ago. A quote from Lim inside the journal entry for the Void Idol tells us that the ancient civilization didn't worship any deity or power. They simply worshipped the darkness, the Void itself. The problem with this is that we just don't know much about the Void and its nature. However, we do know that the Void can exist in three primary forms of matter. Liquid like the Sea of Void and the Abyss, gas like the Billows of Void shown in the elevator shaft and in a few other places, and solid like Void creatures such as King's Molds and the Collector. We also know that Void isn't much on its own, but with the help of bugs, it can become extraordinarily powerful. Supposedly, Void can also have will and be given form. Elderbug mentions that the rocks in the ancient basin might have possessed a will. This is obviously pretty weird, like how do rocks have will? Now, we all know that the Hollow Knight fandom is a bit too trigger happy with calling things void, but I guess the rocks in the ancient basin must contain at least a very small amount of void. There isn't really any other explanation for what Elderbug is saying here, other than that he could just be wrong, but assuming that Elderbug is actually right in some way, is it actually possible for Void to have a will? When selling Lim arcane eggs, he tells you that they were the ancient civilization's main way of record keeping. He mentions that he could only ever access the outer layer of information and that he is unable to get deeper layers of information within, but that citizens of the ancient civilization were able to do so. When you bring him the fourth arcane egg, Lim mentions that the eggs have a will and willingly sought you out, simply, I guess, because you found four of them. From this, we know that the Void can definitely have will, but how exactly does this work? Does it just have a will on its own? I mean, did the rocks just move themselves to create roads and structures? I doubt it. The Abyss itself just doesn't look natural in any way. It must have been built with a purpose, most likely just to store Void. Okay, so Void can't just have will, but it can certainly be given or imprinted will. Just look at the King's Molds. They were imprinted with primary objectives of defending and killing. The Collector is also a Void Construct and was clearly given the will to go and capture Grubs. If creatures can be given will, I do not see why the Asian citizens could not have given the rocks the will to form into things they wanted, like road structures in the Abyss itself. There is a lot about the Void that is still unexplained, however. Some specific things include what the Void Tendrils are all about, how there is infinite Void coming from that bowl, and how could you give Void focus. In the Hall of Gods, after beating every boss, a statue appears. The statue changes depending on what difficulty you have beaten all the bosses on. I am by no means skilled enough to beat them on a radiant difficulty or anything like that. Each statue comes with its own description and gives you the Void Idol. The statue, after defeating all the bosses on the Ascended difficulty, reads Void Given Form and shows the knight as he looks in the Dream No More ending as he kills the Radiance. The statue, after beating everything on Radiant Difficulty, reads Void Given Focus, and depicts the so-called Shade Lord that is in the Embrace the Void ending. I can't provide much more information on that. I guess Given Form refers to the Pale King creating the vessels, while Given Focus has to do with the God's Ears. However, I can say that these quotes shed a bit of light on Void's power. When manipulated, it can become more powerful, perhaps? And that might be the key to why the ancient civilization worshipped the Void in the first place, because they found its true power and decided to use it to their advantage. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed, but the ancient civilization isn't around anymore. However, some of their relics still exist. 
the Shade Beast, which is the name for the art piece that holds the Bowl of Void. Originally, I had thought that this was just a statue, but upon finding out it can be dream nailed, I assume it is once living. There is also the ancient nailsmith in the Kingdom's Edge. The room is abnormally dark and has void particle effects, so we can deduce that this had something to do with the void. There are also other colossal creatures that aren't proven to be a part of the ancient civilization, but are probably ancient. These would be the Colosseum of Fool's Carcass, the large beast in the Queen's Gardens, and the shell that the Black Egg Temple is built into. We also have the room in the Abyss that upgrades the Howling Wraiths. These are probably shells of past citizens of the ancient civilization. When Dream Nailed, they mention that they will make a return. The main question here is, well, where did the ancient civilization go? Why did they die out? One common theory is that the Radiance herself destroyed them. This theory comes from her Dream Nailed dialogue that reads, Ancient Enemy. Assuming that she is talking about you, that would mean that the Void itself is the Radiance's enemy. Which makes sense, the Radiance is the light and the Void is the dark, complete opposites. However, it is possible that they fell similarly to Hallownest itself simply by attempting to expand its rule. We know that they expanded across most of the land where Hallownest would be because of the soul totems spread about the whole area. Soul totems actually prove quite a lot about the ancient civilization. They show us the expansion of their rule, it shows us their ability to wield soul in some way, and it could possibly show us what some of the citizens might have looked like. Some of these soul totems have shapes on them that we could depict citizens or maybe rulers. Wielding soul is something that a surprising number of things in the game could do. And we can deduce that the void is capable of working with it in some way because the knight can also wield soul. This brings us to something very weird and very important. The snail shamans. We aren't sure where they came from, how old they are, what they do and don't know, or even what exactly their purpose is. We do know that they are made of void, are able to wield soul to create spells, and can be tied to a service. The shaman on the ancestral mound told us that he was meant to stay there and protect it forever. I would probably say that the snail shamans are actually descendants of the citizens of the ancient civilization. The citizens that survived the downfall had offspring, and after many generations became what they are in game. Now, that's obviously speculation, so, you know, that's not canon. Although, they could also be void constructs, given limited information by the ancient civilization before its fall. Now, I do have a few questions that I cannot answer. Is the void or ancient civ related to lifeblood in any way? There's a huge lifeblood room in the abyss that would seem to say so. Did the Shade Lord exist during the ancient civ, or was it created by the God Seekers through their godly focus? What is the room with a desk and chair in the abyss? The desk seems to have four spikes, but one of them is longer than the others, so it doesn't look like a symbol of the Pale King. I actually have a quite an interesting theory on this one. If you took one spike off, leaving three, it does look quite a bit like the Radiance and her head. Perhaps when the Pale King came along, he just put another one on to make it his own? Alright, well, I threw a lot at you today, so let's do a quick recap. The ancient civilization was here before Hallownest, and they worshipped the Void and used its power. They created arcane aches to store information, and they used the wheels of rocks to create huge structures. Oh yes, and the Void is able to be given a will, and possibly given focus in order to become massively powerful. They were also able to wield soul, and they created soul totems to store it. The ancient civilization eventually fell, most likely to a combination of expansion and the Radiance herself. However, descendants who wield soul called Snail Shamans still exist. And lastly, they plan on making a return, although it is unknown how that will be possible. So that was kind of a hard subject to talk about. There is seemingly both a lot of information and somehow almost none. I had a hard time writing this one, but I think I still got the main information behind the ancient civilization across to you. Leave a comment and maybe I can answer any further questions you might have. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time on the Game Movie Jerks.